Welcome, friends of the show. We are back with another episode of the Ferris Wheel Serious Rock Talk Podcast. Oh, all right. A big thanks for your emails, suggestions, and your support on our social media platforms. Continue to email us at SeriousRockTalk at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Listen to a new show every week. Just tune in each Wednesday evening, 7 p.m. New York City time on Cap City Beats, located at www.capcitybeats.ca. Okay, buckle up for some serious rock talk. So what are we going to do today, gents? I think we're going to go to bed, put some makeup on. No, I'm sorry. Woke up, get out of bed. Drag the comb across my head. And we're not paying royalties for that, so back off. So what we're going to do today is talk about some classic rock masterpieces, Ian, right? Some of them, you, you looked at them, you're like, okay. We did say classic rock, too. Yeah, we did. So I'm just going to motor along and just move on in. By the way, I, my name is Kennedy. To the left of me is Dr. Clark, and to the right of me is Stephen Wheeler. And here we go. So alphabetically, okay, I believe, yep. they got ACDC back in black, quickly recovering from the death of... Of Bon Scott in okay. early 1980, Brian Johnson comes in and does this masterpiece I with ACDC. But that is his first one, eh? That is his first one. Okay. And uh, he had said that uh, when he went there, he was actually, he had a garage shop, by the way. He was a mechanic. I know. It it's was weird, weird. Eh? Yeah, very weird. So ACDC, Back in Black, I have it on vinyl. <laughs> and it's probably one of the best debut album for a singer ever when you think about it. <laughs> It yeah, is. That's a good point. Uh, the second one that's considered a masterpiece, and I'm not going to argue with it because I agree 100%, is Brian Adams' album um, Reckless, which was 1984. And even though he came out with a good album previously called Cuts Like a Knife, this one actually is better. And it is a classic rock masterpiece. I had this on vinyl twice, on CD once, and on cassette once. Is every song strong? All the time. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I love that album. Okay. From start to finish. Uh, next one, Ian. Aerosmith, Toys in the Attic. Yeah, in previous shows we've discussed what is the best Aerosmith album. And I think it's Toys in the Attic. What do you guys think? It has to be their best one. I think it was one of their debut albums uh, earlier on. Uh, it was super that, early. Yeah, super early. Something like that. Is it that third? early? You're kidding. 73, I believe. Whoa. I have it on. Uh, it's hard to say I have it on vinyl. Actually, no. Suffice to say, I have it on vinyl. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's I think what do you, don't you have on vinyl? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just the uh, next one. Oh, I don't yeah. have on vinyl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a good album. Okay. And I think everything else until Run DMC revived their career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think it's the last great album of the Phase One. Let's call it that. The next one, yeah. uh, Ian. I don't have this album, but you know well, about it. Uh, Jimmy Carter and I know about it. <laughs> Aerosmith. No, it's uh, Allman Brothers uh, live at the Fillmore, oh Fillmore East, I mean New York, Bill Graham's place. Yeah, this is super. It's an influential album, and it's a classic album. They're such good musicians. If you want to hear a great musician, rock musicians live, get the album. And it's also, uh, for those of you who want to test your systems at home, it is a great oh, test yeah. record. Because it live never sounds... Album. Yeah, for a live album. It's insane. It shouldn't have, one of those albums that shouldn't have happened. Next up, we have the band's second album, simply called The Band. Was it their second? Yeah, the first one. I think, I think it was music from the Big Pink. I think you're right. And uh, this album I have, and it sure impacted me. It is strong every song uh robbie robertson got just like a bolt of a genius lightning it's great i have this album on vinyl i have the it was the 50 year reissue is it really eh? that's what i have this nice. one here i have it twice okay that was well, you can have it three or four times it's that so good the diesel's revolver some people uh claim this to be its opinion their best album Abbey road is their best that's what i think but a lot of people who you know Probably to be a little bit controversial, go to Revolver. What do you think, Ian? Is it a good choice or is it just a safe choice? <laughs> it's a it's a controversial choice. If, if we're real Beatles aficionados, they often go for Revolver. What about Rubber Soul? Mm, yeah, they could go for that. But this Revolver is strong with the Klaus Vormann 
uh, art in the front. All right. So next on the list, we have uh, one of the albums that Ian, I'm sure, has in his uh, repertoire. I do. Yeah, Jeff Beck Truth. The Jeff Beck Band. Yeah. Uh, this is really early. This is what, 68, it says my notes here. Uh, with a little known singer named, uh, I can't even think of that. I think it's Rod Stewart. And uh, with Ronnie Wood doing some guitar. I. It's not personally my favorite Beck album. It's probably Blow by Blow. Uh, but again, it every song is strong, which is why it's on this list, folks. The next one is Stephen Wheeler's personal favorite. I'm almost positive I do have this on vinyl, and it is heavy as hell. It's more than 180 grams. <laughs> right. it, it, it's heavy in every sense of the word. Yeah, it's the second album by the band, and their more important one. It shaped the sound that defined their career. The heavy riffs, the rhythms that are like doomy, gloomy. And basically, like the amazing voice of Ozzy Osbourne when he had full control of his faculties. I just yeah. wish Ozzy would do some sort of like Barry Manilow renditions. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be all right. The next, next one is uh, Bon Jovi. Oh, your friend. That's it. Uh, bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet. Uh, this album here uh, is also known from the big hair in the 80s synths that made their first two albums so forgettable. They finally struck gold <laughs> number three, and uh, what is there left to say? But this uh, this album here has the one which is "Living on a Prayer," and everyone oh, loves wow. that song. Yeah, it's an it anthem. is a good album, and obviously the boys from Jersey gave it justice. Next up, we have a an album named after I don't know maybe the band called Boston, and their album is called Boston. And it was everywhere the the uh, the uh, you know flying saucer thing. It was just uh, hugely influential. It's strong, amazing production, like for the time, outstanding. I have this one on picture disc and on vinyl. Oh, that's nice. And then I have this one here on vinyl. And he's referring to David Bowie, The Rise and Fall, Ziggy Stardust, and the Speeders from Mars. Speeders. They're incredible. This album, there is not a weak song. I think it's what seventy two, if I'm right. This album, fifty yep. years already. Yeah, so he's, it, yeah, it's been reissued, of course, for like fifty bucks or something. But it's oh, it's for the fifty years. <laughs> Every dollar, nice, a, a nice, dollar a year. year. Nice day. I remember it was released. It was like seven ninety nine. Anyway, it was an amazing album, and um, not it made David Bowie's career. That says something. I actually want to get the album of David Bowie and Bob Newhart, where or Bing Crosby when they <laughs> sing. Oh, oh, Little Drummer Boy. Little Drummer Boy. Yeah. That's, bo- 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 <laughs> this is an album that Ian likes. Listen, I had this on vinyl. I think I threw it against a wall one day. But it's the, we're talking with the Cars with their debut album. Rick Ocasek got the uh, helm there. And it everybody had this album. It was an AM and an FM hit, as they said in the day. It's a great album, their first release. And it's filled with energy. Yeah, sure. This album here... Their song, uh, I Want You to Want Me, want is better live than their studio version. Their studio version sounds country. Yeah, that's, that's true. Really yeah. good point. It's and better. it's not strong. It's weak. And he never got credit for the most famous words of uh, uh, in rock history at a live concert, whereas I want you... To oh, yeah. want me. Yeah, I know, I know. So I know. there's something going on with that. So yeah, the album we're referring to is Cheap Trick at Budokan, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, really. And also, uh, after they uh, appeared at Budokan, uh, and uh, so did Bob Dylan, like, it became a thing to do in the 70s. Yeah, because uh, isn't Budokan originally just an Olympic... Uh, as far as I know, yeah. Yeah, so be- no really good acoustics it there. sounds cool. This album here, Ian and I argued to keep it on the list. I kept. He we, won. <laughs> we're talking about Chicago's. I think is the first album, right? Yeah, the Chicago Transit Authority. It was yeah. That was the original name of the, the group, by the way, Chicago Transit Authority. Later, short to Chicago, Chicago, and uh, it was kind of a it, it influential. They used a lot of horns, as you know, and it's kind of like Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Pro, it was kind of a next step for Blood, Sweat, and Tears that type of meter. And, um, yeah, it's a great album. There's not a weak song on it. Uh, I think it's because I listened to so much of it on classic vinyl. Probably. Uh, The next one that we got coming up is, uh, well, The Clash, London Calling. And there's a little history on this one here. The bassist, when he smashes guitar 
at that live event, he ended up breaking his watch. And the oh, time wow. that it broke was exactly at 10.50 oh, p.m. Cool nice. That was something that they just announced recently on the radio because the anniversary, I guess, is coming up on this. But you, yeah, if London Calling, folks, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the cover, but it is one of the, I forget the name of the photographer. I did know at one point it is uh, worthy of a poster. I mean, it's talking about the spirit of rock and roll and the colors they used on the cover with the pink and the green. Uh, were purposely done to uh, uh, pay homage to Elvis Presley's first album. It was, uh, the photographer was a lady. I forget her name because yeah. I just mentioned it. And yeah. he gave, her, the bassist gave her the watch. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. That he broke because he figured, well, what the hell? Why does he need it, right? It's broken. That's great. It's just so, going for it. Uh, so the next one. The next one we have, we're going to talk about uh, Alice <laughs> Cooper, Killer. Uh, this is influential. And uh, he has some hits off of that. The big thing about this album, though, is that Killer album is it introduced uh, Alice Cooper to the mainstream. A lot of people bought Killer. It's just, it wasn't obscure, you know. Vince Fournier came into his own. The next uh, one, we uh, got, uh, well, this one here, you can't go. You can't go wrong, really. With, with Cosmo. Uh, Disraeli, cream. Oh, yeah, cream. Disraeli Gears. Disraeli Gears, I would argue, is cream. And I, I'm not allowed to choose from. <laughs> But it's um, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this is their best album, right? Not a lot you know what I mean? They're, they were they weren't pro. It's not exactly Bob Dylan here. They weren't that prolific. Yeah. So it's so. the one with Strange Brew and the Sunshine yeah. of Your Love. <laughs> uh, the next one definitely needs to be mentioned, and it's Cosmos Factory by CCR, better known as John Fogerty. Yeah. And this one here was uh, released. This is the uh, 1970. Actually, it came yeah. after where they had a small break. Break. And this is where they had doot, 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 looking out my back door. Yeah, th- every song is strong. It's a freakish album that way. Well, and that didn't was... they just re-record it with uh, Fogarty's children? Yeah, it's no, called is it? uh, was it Fogarty's Family Factory? That's what it goes by. Right. Nice. Okay. <laughs> the F F as a F- as a friend, John. <laughs> as a friend, John. It's over. <laughs> As a friend, uh, this is an album that Ian smashed about three times over because we're talking so about Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Uh, Deja, Deja vu. vu. It's not the one with Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. No, it? it's this is it's okay. It's the Hawaii yeah. one. I would debate this one. I think um, they have a stronger album than this. But anyway, this got a lot of play at the time. It's the one where they're all dressed in faux Civil War outfits. I don't know. You know, I, David Crosby turned eighty-one not too long ago. Oh my God. Nobody away. thought he would get past 40, I think. No. Well, you've had four new livers in you. Yeah, I guess you can do anything. This is a good album. Deep Purple, oh, Machine Deep Head. Machine Head. Every song is strong. Highly recommend. I it. like that. Mike, I got a girl from Tokyo. <laughs> Which no. is fascinating because you consider, <clears throat> is there a fifth album in four years? But, oh, they were hard. There still are a hard-working band. Uh, Ian Gillen and the Boys, right? Richie Blackmore. Ian Pace on... Um, drums but he's still with them they're still going yeah they still tour well so the next one we have hysteria by Def Leppard it is probably one of my favorites because it's the time I grew up in obviously they were produced by one of the most you know the, the biggest legend in in, in well, somebody's husband yeah Shania Twain's former husband Mutt Lang Mutt Lang so this is actually um, this is the actually the the, um, the album the follow up went after Rick Allen had his car accident and unfortunately, he had to amputate the drummer's arm, and he basically reinvented himself. Exactly. And they yeah. came out with this album here of Hysteria, and it is a kick-ass album. Their best, I think. So the next album that we have here is very popular in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> holy Diver. Oh, Holy Diver. You stepped in my foot. What's your problem, Pussy? Holy Diver. <laughs> kick so, kick ass cover. We're talking about a guy named something D- Ronnie James G- Dio. With I'm vocals kidding, that just raise uh, the paint off your walls if you put it at a right volume. Oh, no, this is compared to Rush. But do you think it's because when he was in uh, Newfoundland, that's where he got the uh, the concept <laughs> to name the album? I, Holy, Holy Diver. Diver, did you fall in the water there already? Okay, okay, no way, pal. Take it easy. Okay. <laughs> I think I think quite it could be. A good album, Ian? Outstanding. Uh, Dire Straits. Dire Straits is their, I, I believe this is the first album we're looking at here, folks. And yeah, the self-titled. 
introduce that Mark Knopfler sound, that plucky sound he uses, and it's um, yeah, it's every song is good. The Sultans of Swing is on. Yeah, it's a great album. The Next. Doobie Brothers, the no. Captain and Me. No, no, we're gonna let that one out. The Doors, their their first album is often referred to as among the best first albums of any rock band in the history of the world. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, every song is strong. From the beginning to the end. No, oh, kidding. nice. Nice, thank you. Thank you. When I bought that album, I said to Ian, I said, which Doors album should I get? Oh, the first one. What's it called? The Doors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blonde on Blonde, it's a classic. I'm not familiar with it, Ian. Blonde you, on Blonde. You are familiar? The, uh, everything's on. Blonde on Blonde is one of those, I won't mention the other two. You can look it up. Uh, Dylan, during this period in the 60s, released three classics in a row he was like this curative volcano and blonde on blonde is an amazing album all right it's a masterpiece this is probably my favorite eagles album you know no kidding wake up to the hotel california such a lovely face such a lovely place and it's probably the album everybody have yeah, really? If they have an Eagles album at home, this is they're touring it. Right? I'm going to the concert. I'm so jacked, and at the end of the day, I will come back with a T-shirt that's going to say Hotel California. But you're going to pay forty eight dollars for it. So. No, I'll get it off Amazon. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one we have here is uh, Wheeler's favorite, which is Emerson Lake and Palmer called Tarkus. At first, hey. I thought it was Taurus, but uh, go ahead, Wheels. Yeah, no, not my favorite. Uh, but it is one of the most influential ones. The side one is made up of 20-minute title track, which, let's that's face it, pretty that, good. that's pretty good. Uh, side two is a collection of shorter songs, although shorter songs when the first one is 20 minutes is up to you to guess what <laughs> the length of a song. <laughs> At that point, uh, it, it is a revolutionary album, but in my mind, not necessarily their best. I agree with that. Next yeah. one. Uh, oh, sorry. You want to continue on that? No, one? no, no. no. I, I, I think Brain Saddle is their best. But anyway, uh, next one I got here is Fleetwood Mac Tabarnak Rumors. <laughs> Never and heard of it. The whole well, they didn't have the Tabarnak. That was just the Quebec, oh, okay. the, the Quebec okay. reissue. That's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> depressing. The Quebec That's pressing depressing. <laughs> is depressing. But the album itself, Rumors, was specifically named that because of all the rumors going around with the band of who's dating who, who's hooking up with who. Heck, Stevie Nicks, why not? <laughs> yeah, out of, out of this cacophony of un unhappiness and despair came one of the best pop albums of all time. Oh, God, what you have to do for art? Uh, the next album, I have it. Ian, you have it. Okay, the next album here is called Frampton Comes Alive. I know everyone's tired of it. It was played too much. He won all these Grammys. I know, I know, I know. But... If you can force yourself to listen to it with virgin ears, as they say, it is a pretty good live album. By the way, biggest selling live album of all time. Still to this day? Yep, live album to this day. The next one is uh, Peter Gabriel So. Uh, Wheels, go ahead, take it because you're a Genesis guy. Yeah, so this is uh, Peter Gabriel's reinvention to a certain degree. Yeah, he, really. he had a few albums before this as a solo artist. They were very proggish still. So is basically Peter Gabriel becoming something else. Uh, and yeah, this weird R&B singer or something. Yeah. It's incredible. And Sledgehammer is basically one of the anthem yeah. of, the, uh, of the 80s. It's also a cover that uh, Dave Matthews does on his live performance. I just thought I'd share that little tidbit really? of information. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Uh, Wheels, go ahead again with this one. So Genesis, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway... Uh, their most concept album and I think if I'm not mistaken the one where Peter Gabriel said okay I'm done with this that was his right yeah the last one uh, and it, it, it's still very good but to my mind not necessarily the best Genesis to start okay. with okay interesting Next one is Guns N' Roses' Appetite for Destruction. I love this album, and I love the quote here. Rock and roll needed a kick in the ass in the late 80s, and Guns N' Roses delivered it from start to finish with Welcome to the Jungle, Paradise City, Sweet Child of Mine, Night Train, Michelle, My Michelle, Mr. Brownstone. I'm telling you, this album from start to finish is probably the best album. I also do think their follow-up album, Lies, is slightly better because it's a different type of hmm. of okay. uh, of music that they put in there. 
But needless to say, this is an album that you put on when you want to go to the gym. This is an album you put on when you want to start drag racing and racing people in your cars. This is an album that you want to go to a singer's home and give them <laughs> laughs and, and help them out. They, they'll love this album. Or believe me. Last Rites, too. That's they want it. to have heart seizures. So, the, the, Especially with the cover. That's yeah, it. Yeah. And the next one is Ian's favorite album oh, of George Harrison, All Things oh, Must Pass. This is three, three vinyls. This is three three vinyls of your life you will never get back. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why he punished people this way. I know he it was in your face. I'm a composer too, not just John and Paul. Yeah, okay. But to do three of them is punishing. <laughs> so don't don't folks, I guess it's a classic. I'll let, I'll let it go because I'm a nice guy. Uh, Ian Hart, Little Queen. Yeah, this is a great album. We, you know, on this, I wish we could talk more about. Uh, I'm not going to use the term girls bands or female bands, but this the period of rock we're looking at here is mostly uh, male driven. This is the way it was. Not so much anymore, thank you, and thankfully. But uh, the Hart, the um, Wilson sisters and Hart did a great job, and I think overall, pound for pound, it's their best album. Oh, Speaking yeah. of women. Janis Joplin, Pearl. Ian, I think you have this one. Oh, wow. This is a great album, and it's kind of sad. It's a posthumous album produced by Paul Rothschild, former, well, former producer of The Doors at that point, and uh, they were a couple, and uh, she, yeah, she passed away almost before the album was finished. They didn't quite have time to add a final vocal. It's a great album, Pearl. And Rothschild, he's got the Rothschild winery. Is that him? No. Okay. Unfortunately, not for him. <laughs> Next album, I would argue and say is probably Hendrix's best and only album, which would be Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Are you experienced, Ian? What do you think about this album? Not quite the only one, but I would say it. It, it kind of, uh, yeah, it's the template for Jimi Hendrix, right? Yeah. Like that's the feedback, the kind of cosmic songs. Yeah. Uh, Rebel Yell by Billy Idol Steven Wheeler would you go on and let us know what you think about that album really good very 1980s super uh, 80s super 80s uh, Idol here found his voice it's pushing away from the pop punk he was doing before and if you're a Gen X it's probably on the soundtrack of your life kind of situation yeah and if you're a Gen X, the next album will definitely be on the soundtrack of your life, which is Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast from start to finish with Run Through the Hills, Number of the Beast. This is metal at its finest. I think Iron Maiden pretty well solidified their career with this album of lo alone. Uh, if you listen to Maiden's later stuff, it gets a little bit more longer and it just starts draining itself out. Okay, I get it. You guys are musicians. You could play. But Number of the Beast from track to track, start to finish, pound for pound, probably one of the best metal albums out there. And you heard it here, folks. That's right. Uh, next one is an album that Ian enjoys the most, which is Surrealistic Pillow by Jefferson Airplane. And Grace Slick is actually smiling on the cover of this You're album. You're kidding. Usually <laughs> she's just like... I don't know. She stepped on a nail or something. <laughs> She's not happy. Uh, this has her two big hits on it. This is 1967, by the way. Uh, Somebody to love and White Rabbit. That's it. And uh, it's a great album, uh, both sides. And as uh, trivia, uh, one of Hunter Thompson, the writer's finest favorite albums. Really? Yeah, it's a great album. I have it on vinyl. Uh, Ian, the album that we've talked about, about a lot from seasons two all the way up until five was Aqualung by Jethro Tull. Well, the reason we did is because of the romantic lyric, snot running down his nose. Yeah, it was uh, Aqualung, listen, is a hugely influential album. It's kind of like a Dylan thing. It was a social comment and uh, anti-religion, anti-capitalist. Yeah, the leader of the band, Ian Anderson, really went ape. And it's a great, listen, every song is really good, whether you agree with the guy or not. He plays the skin flute on that album. <laughs> the, <laughs> may have to edit that one. Uh, yeah. Next one you have is Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by uh, Elton John. And Dua Lipa. No, <laughs> I think Dua Lipa was not even a glimmer no, no, in her dad's Dua eyes Lipa's at the point. Dua father wasn't born. Yeah, born, yeah probably. <laughs> Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. Uh, 
this is a, a incredible double album. vinyl. It's a double album. Every song is really good. Some are amazing, like candle, uh, you know, candle in the wind or whatever. Some, but everything is really strong. I got. I was quite young. I got it when it came out. Goodbye, Norma Jean. Change it to Goodbye, England's Rose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. He redid it. Right. That's true. I yeah. Know, I know. Why? I don't know. Uh, Ian, we debated on this one, and we decided that we were going to keep it on the list. Which one is it? Uh, Escape by Journey. It was was it really their best you one? one? I didn't know. I was relying on your opinion more about Journey. It's got Don't Stop Believing, so... Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is probably the one song everybody knows of Journey. Journey. Okay, I'll leave it on. We'll leave it on. All right. It's a good album. Uh, next one, out of respect, they've just been inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, Judas Priest, British Steel. Yeah. What do you think? I mean... Well, it's more Wheels' wheelhouse. He likes this kind of stuff. He, he, he likes Judas Priest. Uh, yeah, not, not as much as other metal band from the era, but I have to say... Uh, very interesting sound uh, it to a certain extent is the uh, gateway between uh, the more rockish metal of uh, black sabbath and the heavier stuff that's coming in the 80s uh, later in the 80s okay so the next one wheels carry on my wayward son kansas left overture yes so uh, i mean like you said carry on wayward son an anthem, I think, in a great deal of the world, especially oh, in the yeah. sound, uh, magnum opus. This is Kansas at their best, but also at their most. Uh, yeah, let's put it that way. The, the, I know, like a eight minute piece. Uh, I know it's a little indulgent. It is indulgent, it, it, not everybody's Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Yeah, well put. Uh, Wheels, I got you this one for your birthday last year. True. Kim Crimson in the court of the Crimson King. The Crimson. And it's a heavy album. <laughs> it is a very heavy album in every sense of the word. Uh, <laughs> the thing weighed like 10 pounds. <laughs> it's a debut album. It's probably one of the be- best debut albums of oh, any that band. That was their first, was it? It I was. The that. guy screaming on the cover there. Yeah, and uh, from the get-go you see what Prague is going to bring, including the overstuffed 12-minute two-part Moonchild. Uh, you have to remember oh, that is so proggy. Eh? Yeah, and you have because you have to remember it's like a, a, a vinyl record is if you're pushing it, uh, twenty minutes. Uh, I mean, thirty minutes. Thirty it, if you're poor, it's it, incredible. It, if like you're really K, pushing it's a KTEL. it, like at KTEL is thirty minutes. If you want a really good sound, it's fifteen minutes or less per yeah. side. These guys were really pushing it, uh, okay. but. Uh, they captured everybody's attention and they launched prog rock. Yeah. Uh, the Kinks, Ian, this one here's a very good album. I actually have this one on CD. Oh, really? And it's The Kinks. Uh, the Kinks are the Village Green Pres- uh, Preservation, Preservation Society. Society. Yeah, yes. that was. Uh, you will still hear that reference. A few guys got in trouble. Uh, I forget the name of the. It's a big band, but they sampled. Oh, Green Day sampled some stuff, uh, a riff off of that album. And didn't properly acknowledge, and they had to. So it was a little kerfuffle. It was a big, uh, I'll say it's a concept album, and uh, every song is interesting. Yeah, Davies did, Ray Davies did a great job. The next album is actually probably one of my favorite albums, uh, Led Zeppelin IV, I'm not going to lie. Obviously, as you heard in previous shows, they are, to me, the most iconic number one rock band of all time. Uh, needless to say, if I had to choose an order of albums I like the most of Led Zeppelin, four has to probably fall in there, so it's probably going to be two, four, Houses of the Holy, then number one. That's how I'm going to do my hmm. ranking. I, I like Houses of the Holy. I don't think it got enough recognition, but this is your Led Zeppelin four. I like Jimmy Page, as he said in an interview, we had to make up for what we did in number three because apparently number three did not get that much good ratings. No, it, they they panicked a bit because of that. It did, but this one here has got like everyone knows it got Stairway to Heaven. It's an iconic album. It's I don't know. They made up for three. You could just go one, two, skip three. But you kind of oh. need three to get the four. I admire three because it's mostly acoustic. When considering mm. where they were coming from, that was going out of left field. Yeah, it, it didn't pan out, but. You have to admire Good it. Good point. Now, this is an album that Ian regrets buying, but he bought it anyways. Which one's that? John Lennon, John Lennon, Plastic Ono. Hey, <laughs> listen, I, that's a that's I think Lennon's best album. It was the first one out of the gate, 
And that's the one he's just sitting in the park with Yoko leaning against the tree. And the Plastic Ono Band, a lot of good stuff on that. I just think it wasn't so overproduced. Later on, he almost relied too much on production. Leonard Skinner, pronounce Leonard Skinner. I know, again, kind of a goofy. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, by the way, trivia there, I think Leonard Skinner was the name of their janitor at someone's high school. I heard it was either one of their gym teachers or yeah, a, something uh, like that. Something like that, and it's kind of just sidebar. It's also where Pink Floyd came up with their name, where it was uh, something Floyd and another. Yeah, there were two musicians. Yeah. yeah. So interesting how this concert came about. I think the story was when I got from my dad, he said it was either a chemistry teacher or a phys ed teacher, but it was someone that knocked on them saying they weren't going to accomplish much in life. That's really great. He <laughs> used his name. That, that sounds like P, uh, like a physical education teacher. Yeah. You know, well, it, well, I don't know. My phys ed teachers anyway, were great. Back to the album. That's a good album. It's strong. It gives Southern Rock its name. Uh, this one here, I actually enjoy this album. I we're str- talking about Paul McCartney band, <laughs> band on, on the run. run. I'm sorry, Run. It is a very good album. I still believe that if the Beatles would have been together at that time, this would have been the another Beatles album. Uh, it's long- very Beatlish, yeah. <laughs> and then, it would have sounded better though. Yeah, because you would have yeah, had John in there. Right. You would have had you know Ringo and you know George. Jeff Lynn. <laughs> Jeff Lynn would have came in. He would have helped produce it anyway. Uh, Pete, Pete, Billy Billy Preston would have came in there. And too. Pete Best could have helped. Out. Pete okay. Best could have came in for an extra drummer. Clapton but, could have done some guitar riffs. But no, honestly, people always argue and say, "Listen, if the Beatles didn't break up and they would have continued, Band of Run would have been another album that the Beatles." Well, produced. I'll go on record and say it's Paul McCartney's best album. I agree, yeah. I, I'm not, pipes of Peace? Oh, yeah, or London Calling, whatever it was. <laughs> no, London Town, that was it. Oh, man. Uh, so that was a good one. Next one is uh, Battle of Hell, Side B. I know. <laughs> By the late, great Meatloaf. That's what his mother called him, Meatloaf. No. <laughs> uh, I pronounced the Meatloaf, the priest. Uh, this is a really good album. We're talking about Meatloaf's Battle of Hell. Theatrical at its best. It is. Yeah. Jim Stein does a great job writing. Uh, I think it's produced by Todd Rundgren, A and B Sides. It's a strong album. has everything on it. It's fun. Too. Plus, plus the cover made like parents yeah, all over the know, U- this U.S. So just go uh, something, uh, <laughs> bat something. But the other thing is that they said that uh, do you give do you give the wolf your throat? Yes, that whole yeah. theatrical stuff. It's I, great. Eh? It, it's it's fun. interesting, and you could tell it's from you know he was in a Rocky Horror Picture Show, so he, he sure was going was. for theatrical. So the next Good one point. on the list, we have actually a John Mellencamp, uh, a Scarecrow. I actually have this album, and I actually have the Meatloaf album and the Banner Run album. I have a lot of these bloody albums, and this is why my spouse yells at me for not having any space in the house. <laughs> no, but not understanding. Scarecrow is probably one of Mellencamp's, uh, uh, it's, it's one of his better albums, I guess. It was okay. I don't know why even commenting on it. Actually, no, I don't even like it. I like Aha better. There you go. There you go. But you know what? I got to respect him. He's on there. This one here, Wheeler, I'll let you talk about it. I love this album from start to finish. Go ahead. So, Master of Puppets. Uh, the Black Album broke Metallica to the mainstream five years later. Uh, but Master of Puppets was where they became king of trash metal. The epic lo- length of the songs are something actually really new for metal. And they're really at this point at the apex of their creativity uh, that being said I'm more of a fan of the Black Album just because it, it, I think it's more taught true but uh, Master of Puppet is like raw energy like if you need raw energy in your life Master of Puppet is it when I saw this list I actually thought the Black Album was on there and yeah it's a, I know what you mean sometimes those, those, those listed as a masterpiece and, well, really what about Abbey Road well, Abbey Road yeah. is a masterpiece. No, but you know what I mean? Instead of Revolver. Revolver like, yeah. Yeah. Metallica, okay, could I argue? Well, you know, I could even argue Ride the Lightning. No, exactly, yeah. You know, there's a lot of them. And again, Metallica became relevant again, thanks to Netflix due to Stranger Things. And they yeah, talked to Kate Bush. Yeah, and Good this Lord. is great because you know what? Metallica, they're getting new fans. They're getting younger fans. The new generation's learning about Metallica, and I'm so happy that today's generation is learning about the good stuff that I grew up to and even stuff that Ian grew up to because there's a bit of an age difference between the both of us. Well, there's actually not that much. We'll that and then there's another album here that Ian, I'm sure, has, which is Steve Miller band, Fly Like an Eagle. Fly Like, fly like an Eagle is a great album. 
Okay, Steve Miller's career, which he milks to this day, is based on two albums, and this is one of them. And uh, greatest hits is his other. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is abracadabra. Yeah. Abracadabra. No, this is uh, an incredible album. I want to reach out and grab you. Yeah. I know the poor guy. Say that one in French. I knew no, I'm not, because <laughs> we're gonna get letters. Uh, we want letters. Uh, this one here, Ian. I know you have Johnny Mitchell Blue. Bernie Mitchell Blue is a great. I uh, hate. Listen, this is, we just spoke about this. I like Court and Sparks, my favorite Mitchell album. This is number two. I'm in a good mood today, so I'll let it go. All right. The next one is The Monkees. Ian, The Monkees. Oh, The Monkees. My, hey, hey. my sisters bought this pretty well when it came out. Uh, I like Monkey Headquarters a bit better. But this, they had two strong albums in a row. And no, I don't really care what you think about the prefab for. I love The Monkees. The Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. I argued with the two of you to take this off the list, and you outmuscled me, and here we well, are talking about Well, nights in white satin. That's, well, that's why you song. have a, a black eye. I was wondering. Uh, well, you know. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a good album. In fact, it's, it's in between rocky, proggy, folky. I don't know what it is. It was one of my dad's favorite albums, and oh, he had good. good taste, so I'm leaving it in. Good for you. This one here, uh, where Wheeler thought Van Halen was a very vile <laughs> human being, is actually he meant Van, Van Morrison. Morrison. Because there's so many similarities between Van Halen and Van Morrison. It's all in the van, man. Yeah. So this is Astral Weeks. Uh, Ian is... Oh, yes. I thought, okay, I, often, I thought Moondance would have been his better album. That's I do... I think it is. I think it's the revolver thing in Abbey Road. I think the real aficionados go for Astral Weeks, whereas I think Moondance is stronger. I am H.O. This one here, Motley Crue, shout, shout, shout at the devil. It's a very good album. I love this album. It's actually their second album. Um, And at the end of the day, this is where Motley Crue started becoming into their own. And this is where people started realizing, saying, okay, Vince Neil, Nikki Six, Mick Mars, and Tommy Lee, you guys are for real. You guys are not gonna you guys are not just a flash in the pan. You're gonna be around for a long time. True. And they are. They're still going. They're relevant again. Here they are. They're touring. Yeah, okay, Vince Neil's lost a bit of his voice, but at the end of the day, he's still going. Give the guy credit. Could I uh-huh. doubt anybody for still performing? No, I can't. Although when you look at the cover of this album, you don't understand why there was a hole in the ozone layer in the 80s. Oh, yeah, with all the hairspray yeah, on there. Yeah. But they look totally different now. Holy oh. cow. <laughs> Holy yeah. diver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Holy diver. Holy diver. Uh, Wheels, you want to talk about uh, Tate Zumatar? <laughs> Tate Zumatar. Motorhead's Ace of Spades. Uh, basically, uh, this is the album that made them uh they never really wavered from their core sound through their entire career so if you have this short album uh which was pretty much their best you have every motorhead album you need in your collection well put, well put. uh but i mean no I, i'm teasing somewhat but uh, ace of spade is one of those if you like metal you need in your collection Next one is Nirvana Nevermind. I have this one six times. I'm not lying. I have it three times on vinyl, the other time on CD. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a iconic album. It is a pulp culture for my generation and Wheels' generation. 1991, this is the first album of David Grohl being on there as their drummer. And from start to finish, it is probably one of the best albums out there, track to track. I love this album. Uh, you know, we're going to have to do a, a, another Desert Island Disc yeah, sure. show, and this one will definitely be on my list of and things to there, bring. That little baby in the front grew up to sue the band. There you go. Uh, the True next story. one we have here is uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Blizzard of Oz. Take it away, wheels. So basically, this is uh, Ozzy's middle finger to his old band, uh, Black Sabbath. This is to show that... Frankly, he was in control of his future. That being said, oh. uh, at that time, it was a really big ga- a gamble. No, Sharon's uh, in control of his well, future. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I mean, this album was composed in an age of drug and alcohol. Uh, his personal life was spinning out of control. It just shows you, right, that sometimes, I hate to say it, folks, it can make great music and, oh know. yeah but it, although it does help that randy rhodes was on this album oh wow uh, yeah. he was uh phenomenal we should do a little thing with randy rhodes someday but how good he was we could 
Yeah, he was phenomenal. He just you listen to an isolated solo, you say, well, "Come on, gone too soon, man." Oh gone yeah, way too, too soon. soon. Yeah. Uh, next album, Pearl Jam 10, by far probably one of their best albums. I like this album from start to finish. Is the song "Once" that got them off this album that just got them known this is the song that Eddie Vedder auditioned for and off it went so as the story goes Mike McCready is the brains behind Pearl Jam and they needed a singer and lo and behold boom Eddie Vedder Eddie Vedder fell into their lap and here they go personally I think Pearl Jam should have stopped at album number three which is Vitology because the rest to me is irrelevant (laughs) and all you Pearl Jam fans out there sorry first three albums that's it just hey, tour. You don't need anything you else. You got one in you, so. So they had three in them, and the rest, meh. Yeah. Uh, the next one that we have here on the list is uh, Wheels' favorite album, which is uh, Pink Floyd, The Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, yeah, so uh, what's really fascinating about this is it's their seventh album. Like, most Isn't bands really don't have one or seven? two. It's their seventh album. Uh, it, it made them stars in 73, it, which is just puzzling. It goes to show there was something in the water back in '73 yeah, because it, it's borderline experimental. Uh, the band became one of the biggest in the world with this, and time hasn't really uh, dimmed the, the album's appeal. I think money's on every soundtrack of every it, movie right. at least once I a know. year. It's true. Uh, so it, it's a great album to have in your collection. Next one, Ian, the police synchronicity thoughts. Yes, the, the synchronicity. I never really enjoyed the police, but I'm just going to comment on that. Synchronicity was on everyone's turntable when it came out. Uh, it just was, and uh, I'm going to take it uh, on the evidence of who compiled this list that it's their best album. Next one, Queen and Night at the Opera. Well, well, from there's start no to finish, there's no debate on it. There's no debate. Uh, it's a masterpiece. This is actually, I think, um, the one that also has Roger Taylor's song uh, with his car. Oh, yeah. What's, what's the goofy title of it again? Oh, my God. Uh, I love my car. I love, I love my, my car. car. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And was it also the, the name of a Marx Brothers comedy from the 30s? No. No, it wasn't. It was, uh, the, they had stuff like Duck Soup, Night at the Opera. Bro. Night at the Opera, yeah. Uh, Rainbow Rising. This is actually a super group with Richie Blackmore uh, and uh, was it Ronnie James? Uh, Ronnie James Dio. I mean, this is yeah. Everybody knows uh, Rainbow. This is a, one of the. It was a super group that didn't last long. You got to do it with the microphone in your hand. You no, exactly. Uh, he's, he's doing the uh, uh, devil things. With his finger. Yeah. So, so if so you have so. a, a, a track like Stargazer on something like that, it just blows your system and your mind. Yeah. Uh, next one we have the Ramones. Uh, Ian, you yeah. wanted to talk about the Ramones, the Ramones debut album. Were, in the previous shows, well, I've spoken about the Ramones, and uh, they were game changers, and um, they're extremely influential. And incredibly, a few of them are actually passed away. They don't. The band doesn't seem to be that far away in time. But we're talking about you know the early seventies here, mid seventies rather. And they're very hideous looking on this cover, Ian. They never. They never, not just on a cover. <laughs> they didn't do. They weren't a big hair band. No. Uh, next album, Ian. I'm gonna leave this in your hands. Transformer by Lou Reed. Yeah, people uh, say this is his single best album, Transformer. I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah, all right. For the, I can't think of a better Lou Reed album end to end than Transformer. I'll go with it. All right, I'll let you take this one, and then I'll take the next one, and Wheels will take the one after. Uh, Exile on Main Street by the Stones. Yeah, this is I think 19, if I'm right, 72, and this was recorded in a haze of illegal drugs uh, in France, southern France. It should not have worked. I'm not going to say every song is great, like Ventilator Blues or something, but it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing album. Keith Richards was at his riff best. He used to call Keith Richards the walking riff. He was. This is an amazing album just for that. Was this the one that they wrote in a Chateau in France to avoid paying taxes in England? To, yeah, and then they got a whole bunch of trouble. Oh. Yeah, 
in uh, France. Uh, the next one is Living on a Lighted Stage, Rush, Moving Pictures. I have to give this one justice because it is, in my view, probably their best album. And it has songs like Limelight and Tom Sawyer and uh, I like the airport court of Toronto of YYZ, which I thought was pretty funny that they have that on yeah. that album. So Canadian. You know? I know, it is reeks canadian it just reeks canadian but like hey. holy diver <laughs> get off my foot you holy diver that's where james Dio went to uh, newfoundland and he got inspired by it so our next one is santana braxis uh, their second album which had probably his greatest lineup uh, yeah i agree with that and everything's bigger and falls together more effortlessly uh the mix of vocal and instrument just gets you and it's probably his yeah. most reissued uh, yeah it LP. is it's such a cool cover too right? everyone loved the cover uh next one joe satriani surfing with the alien i actually bought this album really and i was waiting for him to have vocals in this oh. album there's oh. nothing that's not he's the jeff Beck type guy he, you probably wouldn't want to hear him sing so that's it. It's just it's yeah. Just guitar. He's basically he's a, he's an instrumentalist. So yeah. what is in your opinion so special about this album? Uh, it's Technique. kind of like Jeff Beck's Blow by Blow or Beckola. It's just a strong album, nice compositions, good right. production. Plus, for comic nerds, it has a Silver Surf on the cover. I know. Who knows the Silver Surfer anymore? All right, and the next one we got Soundgarden, uh, which is super unknown, and it has to be probably one of the best albums that Soundgarden has, especially with Black Hole Sun on there. This album here, uh, till this day is a pop culture icon for those of us that grew up in the 90s. Uh, everywhere you went in the 90s, this album was there, especially in the mid-90s. Oh, yeah. And again, I, I'll go on record saying Kim Thiel is probably a very underrated guitarist. He, in my opinion, probably was responsible for a good portion of the music lyrics uh, on a lot of Soundgarden uh, albums and tracks that we all love and know. And just so you know, he's got a PhD, so that's something smart. So <laughs> and, and to me, this is like the closest thing to a Beatles album we got in the 90s. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, next one is Born to Run. I have this one. Ian? I think it's... Uh, he, okay, there's my proviso. I'm not a Springsteen fan, but... This is his best album, in my opinion. This album made Bruce Springsteen, and it made his whole street-wise New Jersey guy persona, blue-collar persona. You're a big fan of Clarence Clemens. Good, good sax player. Ringo Starr, Ringo. I actually have this album, and it is actually his... Uh, they said it's his third solo album, so he had a little bit of help uh, on uh, George for George Harrison on this one to give him a number one hit. So again, here we go again. You always have someone helping out Ringo trying oh, to yeah. succeed. So it is a good album. I, it is good. It's strong. It's fun. It Ringo's is. Ringo's fun. And it, it's it's. I don't know. I think you should. I think people, if you have a chance. Get it. Get it. Yeah, sure. This is Ringo Barbara Bach, the <laughs> ears. Uh, no, I think. no, no. I think she's it's pre Barbara. Oh, that's pre Barbara. Yeah. Okay. He he met her during the production of the wonderful movie Caveman. Oh Lord. Good Lord. Steely Dan Ah Ja. Hey, it, that launched the Steely Dan uh sound, which believe me, was so influential. Uh, back then if you wanted to test your uh hi fi, there's two albums to listen to with either that or George Benson's Breezen. Although, on even on a really bad system, this sounds good. I think that's the idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is Rod Stewart's Every Picture Tells a Story. Listen, pound for pound, this has to be his best yeah, album. It's a great oh, yeah. album. He, this is before he went off the rails in disco. <laughs> He he did a good job in this album. It's a really earthy album. Because yeah, they they always say his four albums that he you know, Gasoline Alley is another one. This yeah. one, uh, Atlantic was Atlantic Cross. Cross, and he started to go off the rails. And uh, what about Blondes Have More Fun? Oh, stop it! <laughs> he want he just wanted to make money, and he did. Tons. Uh, What's up next? Next, we got on the list is. Uh, Toto 4, and this is the one that meets you all the way, da -da 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 -da, Rosanna. So Toto 4 is a good album. I actually like this album. It has Africa, and it has also, um, um, what do you call it there, um, Rosanna. Um, one of their better albums. 
But not as good as one that I forgot to mention, Super Tramp Breakfast in America. There you go. Uh, now, we've had debates on this. You and my father both agree that Crime of the Century is their best album. I think so. Uh, I, on the other spectrum, feel that Breakfast in America is probably their better album, but I do like Crime of the Century also. And I think the reason why I like Breakfast in America is this is where I think Roger Hodgson took control. Yeah, I have more control. And I like this album. Uh, the We're next getting near one. the end here, folks. The uh, next one is uh, T-Rex Electric Warrior. Wow, this is a great album. This is uh, this is uh, uh, Glam uh, by Mark Boland really before uh, David Bowie took off with it, with the eccentric, completely eccentric costumes and all this Slade and those kind of bands. This is actually a good album, and it shows you whatever said, and I know Mark Boland got, gets knocked a lot, that he could write some great songs. Of course, the big hit on here is Bang Gone. And you have to admire the fact this is their sixth attempt. Like, they, they had f- really... Is that right? Yeah, because they had, like, a folky sound before and yeah, never Yeah, I know, worked. I know. Tornosaurus, they changed yeah. the name, everything. Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry is their best album. Well, let's be realistically, it's got the two good songs, I Want to Rock, and We're Not Going to Take It. So this is, what I, this is all I got from them. And another, mm-hmm. they, they also put out a Christmas album too. Yes, they did. And the Christmas album is basically the musical lyrics of this freaking album. <laughs> I think uh, D. Snyder's kind of limited, but uh, anyway. But I, I don't think he ever pretended that he was anything yeah, more than that. Yeah, you're right. And his cousin is. Uh, 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 his name is uh, Tom Snyder. No, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fred Schneider from the B52s. Uh, okay, there you go. Uh, next album, yes, by far, probably one of my favorite albums. In you might say, yay. Or What's nay. the album? The Joshua Tree by U2. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's probably overall their best. Um, although I don't mind Uck Tongue Baby. Really? Yeah, I like that. The Edge. Um, which is his legal name, Honest Passport, uh, is using interesting pedals. He's a, the the ultimate pedal user. You don't like guitar. you don't like Octung Baby. No, I like Octung. Oh yeah, Octung like, Baby is a good. Album. I think it's yeah. their best yeah. album. I'm not being ser- I'm joking. I'm being no, serious. I agree because I think the Joshua Tree and Octung Baby are probably the two. Boy was good, and or War. They had yeah War War because they had two of them. Boy yeah War was huge. Yeah. Um, so I like them. This album, to me, I, I'll go on record saying it again. This solidified them to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh so yeah, that made it to them. Uh, the next one, Van Halen debut album. Listen, you can't go wrong with this. Okay, um, from David Lee Roth's Horn Dog Aside to Eddie Van Halen's Sizzling Guitar Pyrotechnics, this kicked off a whole new era of hard rock by far. True. Oh, yeah, and you cannot not like this album. It's a very good album. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, who wants to take on Texas Flood? Ian or Wheels? I can if you want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, So this is his first album, and for many, it's his best. A combination of Hendrix-style guitar and uh, Slippery Blues. Uh, You often hear Texas Flood referenced as his best. Exactly, yeah. just do. Uh, A lot of people say he's not all that original, this is rock. We're not talking about it being yeah. really original. Well put. What He's a to... great technician. Amazing. Uh, the next up is the Velvet Underground and Nico. Okay, this is a. Uh, this goes back to the '60s. This Andy Warhol did the cut, the famous banana cover. It's an amazing album. 1967. I'm reading the notes here. Came up. Uh, this album is great. Yep, Nico was an interesting character she was in some uh, Fellini flicks like she was a I think he's a German uh, woman uh, the late Nico and uh, really spooky vocals one of these singers that didn't really hold key but there's a smoky atmosphere to her voice and then of course in the other half of you got Lou Reed perfect counterbalance next one is the who's who's next my favorite who album go uh, ahead yeah it's just every song is strong it's a great album who's next wheels you're up next with yes close to the edge yes sir uh so this is like the ultimate prog album it has three songs that are all nine minutes and up 
Uh, plus two of those tracks are split into four movements each. So uh, if you want pretentious rock, yes, this is the yeah, album no, for you. For it. <laughs> uh, and they don't apologize for it. So you have amazing uh, cuts like Close to the Edge and You and I and Siberian Katru. And that's it. And they're all good. Well, so is uh, Neil Young's After the Gold Rush, as listeners of this podcast know. I'm not a huge Mr. Young fan. This album is so strong. Um, the trivia there, it was composed uh, for a film after the gold rush that never took place. So that's why you have little snippets of songs and stuff. But it's just an, a really strong album. I think it's Neil Young's best album, followed by Harvest. And to top it off, the last album on this list is ZZ Top's Tres Hombres. Sure, at the time, it probably was their best album. But then when they brought out Eliminator, that just changed the whole yeah, dynamic. That was their new image, too. That was yeah. their new image. Uh, yeah. with Lagrange is their biggest hit. <laughs> <laughs> They're a blues-driven uh, band with uh, rock licks. So at the end of the day... Yes, it is a good album. It's probably one you could have in your uh, in your collection to listen to your turntable. But if you're asking my personal opinion, I would go with Eliminator. So would I. Yeah. And does that bring us to an end? That brings yes. it to a close, ladies and gentlemen. The sun is shining. The sun is shining. And there uh, ain't a cloud in sight. It's probably time for some food. Let's go down to the pool. I can see the uh, waiters starting to serve down by the pool here at the beautiful, uh, I better not give the name of the hotel in Las Vegas, but the food comes with the rooms, guys. We really should do our duty. So, uh, signing off, I'm Kennedy. I'm Wheeler. I'm Dr. Clark. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful evening. Take care. Bye-bye.